This video is brought to you by Squarespace, a platform perfect for creating your own website. Hello everyone, welcome to the vlog. So today I'm very excited because we have a lot of work ahead of us. I have a lot planned because as you guys know, I'm currently just trying to like wrap up my senior year and get stuff done. And today is part two of the daily vlogs of every day. Last week you guys saw a video from Friday. This is the next day, so this is Saturday. And today we are going to get cozy in this room. So today we're gonna do a project based off of my shark prints because I never actually got to finalize how they look and I currently hate the way they look. In case you guys didn't know, I had them up in my senior show and I have a video about it but these are the prints that I took down from the wall and I did these prints a while ago I made these my sophomore year no junior year and I really like them and when they were printed out they looked so pretty like this pink color is so good when I had these printed on like nice paper for the first time I realized just how horrible my attempt at like binding them was I tried to do a single stitch bind for this a long long time ago and I really hate how it looks I also laminate it which was a thing I was very like obsessed with at the time and just like the colors were not at all what they should have been this is what they should have looked like and I knew that when I printed these out but I didn't really have a choice then and now I do have a choice I wanted to use these prints because I already have them along with some other ones to try and make them look better so that is what this video is about we're gonna be attempting to make some board books my professor just showed me how to make board books which if you don't know are just those like little baby books with like the thick cardboard so they can turn it with their tiny little fingers. I'm gonna be making these into a board book because I don't really know how I would wanna bind it other than single pages, but I feel like this looks so weird. Also, look how horrible like and loose this is. And this is not like my fault. It's literally just how this binding turns out and I hate it. So we are completely redoing that project. And I actually had all of my stuff printed already. I've been printing it on the blotters on watercolor paper, which is why this looks so nice and feels so fancy. And before we go on any further, let's get a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace actually was one of the reasons I was super inspired to redo this project because as you guys know, I am working on building my website right now for portfolio season. Having an online website is super important as an artist, so I highly recommend you guys check out Squarespace for all of your website building needs. They have everything for you to make your own website and it's so easy through their intuitive platform. You can head to squarespace.com forward slash Tiffany Wang and use the code Tiffany Wang for a discount count on your first purchase of a website or domain. And you can also set your online shop through there and just overall show your artwork online in a very professional way. And I wanted to showcase my prints in a more professional way other than just putting them straight on my website. So I was super inspired to remake this project so I can have something nice to photograph. If you want to check out my website, I will link it down below for you guys. But again, I highly recommend Squarespace for building your own website. And you can use the code Tiffany Wang for a discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. So let's get back to the video. I have a bunch of like giant prints in my room right now of like board books I need to make. This is for the next video, so you guys will actually see that there. I also made them green. Look how like pretty this is. I really like them. I really like these. I think they're really pretty. I also decided to make some green ones inspired by the comment that I make too many pink things, which I don't think I make too many pink things, but recoloring things digitally is so easy. So I figured I might as well just do it because I want to see what it looks looks like and then it's more like gender neutral I know that boys can like pink things and that's totally fine however comma I do think it's nice to have a range with your like stuff that you make so I wanted to have that range so if you want to consider this a more like masculine color um, or like geared towards boys if you want to consider it that I feel like you guys know what I mean right so this is like what one of them looks like I have a couple they're all just like on the ground right now but I've never made board books before so I'm actually a little bit nervous so we're just gonna try to do it I don't I have no idea how it's gonna go like at all we might as well just like get started right so I have a couple different sheets printed I have one tiny green one because the green because the green because the green colorway is like the new one, so I wanna try it, right? And then we have a big green one, like a large, the one I just showed you, the like bigger scale one. And then we have a bigger scale pink one because I didn't want to do a small scale pink one just cause like printing's expensive. And then lastly, we have the baby bunnies, which I will be doing in the next video. So you guys can see that there. I'm very excited. We're gonna just be making board books the entire time. And yeah, I'm hoping it goes well. Also, you guys saw my last vlog. My professor gave me a huge bag of board. So 
So we're gonna try to use it up and use the scraps, which is also nice because I don't wanna have to buy it. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with the tiny green one and we're gonna cut it out and make little prototypes and see how that goes. I have no idea how it's gonna go, so I hope it goes well, but yeah. So let's just go ahead and try it. <laughs> okay, so the first step I'm gonna do is prototype, which basically means I'm just gonna make a tiny version of what I'm trying to do. And I don't always do this for all my projects, but I find that with like things like printouts and stuff, I first of all, don't really mind having a bunch of copies of the same thing. And second of all, it's just nice to get like a practice in before you do the real one because you always think that you know how you're going to do it and then you go to do it and it just doesn't turn out how you thought it would. So here I am cutting out my mini printables. These are the little ones that I have and I'm just going to get them all cut out so that I can make my tiny little version of them. And once I cut all of them out, it was pretty self-explanatory how I do that. I'm going to measure the boards. So I want to make sure that the boards are the right sizes. And you can just cut a bunch of them separately for however many pages you're going to have. And cutting this board is not actually as easy as it looks but i try to just edit it this way so that's more satisfying to watch but just so you know it's not this simple it takes a couple of passes but i'm just going to get the rough shape of them and then i'm going to trim them down better later we do have board shears but i just prefer to do it this way because i find that it's just more exact for me i think in some of my next projects i might try to use the board shears just to see how it goes because i find that this is more precise but maybe something is not too bad about the board shears because this gets really exhausting but i'm just going to cut all these shapes out and get the pages done and then once we have all that that we're ready to start. So this was my first one. I didn't really know what I was doing. I basically just went off of exactly how the professor told me to make it. No experimentations of my own. And the first thing that she told me to do was to use washi paper for the edges. So basically you make like an empty board book and then you just paste the papers on top of that like skeleton. And that seemed easy enough for me. So that is what I'm doing here. I am gluing on the edges and I'm going to just attach this piece of washi paper, which is just like a very strong but thin piece of paper. And this is going to just kind of help ensure that this hinge isn't going to break. And when I first made this, I thought that the book was going to be very fragile because I don't know, I feel like I always think paper is very fragile. But honestly, when you have like a thick enough paper, which this watercolor paper is very good quality and you just have enough pieces of paper, it really isn't that easy to tear. So later on, you'll see that I make an alteration to this method. But for now, like I said, I'm just going to do exactly what she said because I've never done this before. And so as you can see, I just fold in half and make sure everything lines up and I go through the entire book and just making it this way where I line up the edges, I add the washi paper, I smooth it down, and then I fold it down just to make sure that everything fits properly. And there were actually a lot of pages to this. Considering this was my first prototype ever for a board book, I sure picked a difficult one because this is like a really thick one. I think I used over like nine pages for this board book, so that's a lot of boards to match up and line up and get right and make sure that they all fit together, so that was quite a feat by me. But after I got all of the boards together and glued, I'm now going to glue on the paper sheets like I said. So we have a little skeleton of our board book and now we're just going to cut out the papers. So as you can see, I'm going to just cut them with scissors because they print on a plotter, which is just like a huge printer. And so you have to cut them out one by one, obviously, and they come on this huge roll. And instead of scoring how I used to with an X-Acto knife, I'm going to use a bone folder. And this really just helps keep the integrity of the paper, which I never really learned this method until earlier this year. And so I'm very excited to do it now, but we're going to spread out a thin layer of glue and just glue on our sheet. This went surprisingly well uh, for the most part. I didn't do a perfect job, especially since it was my first one, but it gets better from here. So I guess, I don't know, I don't have much to complain about. But yeah, I just repeat this process continuing on. I only cut off the top and bottom edges of the paper because I want to leave a bit to hang over because as you can see, I'm just going to trim it along the edges of the actual board. And this just helps it to be more precise in general because if I try to measure everything to the same measurement, it's just not really going to work. So I'm going to try to just measure it to things I've already measured, if that makes sense. And I always do a different pattern with my glue, so I don't really know what's going on here, but we're just going to glue everything down and this process just repeats on and on, like I said. Yeah, overall, this like went pretty well, surprisingly well. I really thought I was going to run into more like obstacles or something was going to go wrong while making board books because to be honest, that always happens. But for my first attempt, it went really, really well and I'm pretty happy with the end result. So yeah, I'm going to keep going through and cutting off the little edges and other than that there were some places that I could have trimmed better but overall it went pretty well so that's the first 
one, two, and three pages that I did. And I'm just gonna go through and do the rest of them like that. So I'm just gonna trim them down. And this was so satisfying to me because I really love doing these tasks that are like really repetitive. I know some people really hate doing repetitive tasks, but I find it honestly like probably the most relaxing part of art. I'm honestly not very like relaxed by art in general. I'm just a very high stress person, but when I do repetitive tasks that I can really like master and figure out how to do efficiently, that's probably the time I'm the most relaxed while doing art. I don't know if anyone else relates to that because I know some people get super frustrated about having to do tedious tasks. I really, really enjoy it. I don't know what it is about it. It's probably the most like zen I ever feel. But yep, we're gonna go through and do all of this. As you can see, I'm trimming the edges and it went just so well. I was worried about everything not being able to be lined up because of the edges, but I guess through my careful measuring, which I'm actually really bad at measuring, so I was hoping that this would go well, it came out pretty well, so that's good to see. But I'm just gluing on some of the final pages here. As you can see, I'm just cutting them as I go because I don't want like a giant pile of sheets on my desk. And by the time we finish gluing all the sheets, it is now time for the cover. So we're just going to glue on the final pages of the covers. The only difference about the covers is that they're not conjoined and I'm just going to cut them out separately. And this method also makes it super easy to plan your books for like binding and stuff or this hypothetical binding if that's what you want to call it. But I'm trimming the extra edges on the undersides and now I'm just going to glue on the covers. And this is probably like single-handedly the most satisfying part. And I do this last because I don't want to have it on and then get it dirty while I'm making it because you guys know just like how sometimes things get messy when you make stuff especially with glue so i didn't want to risk that yeah we finished the prototype and it looks pretty good okay so the prototype came out well i think it's really cute and it looks good and i think we're just going to go ahead and move on but i wanted to show you guys i just went to the RISD store after this and they have museum board because i was kind of thinking that the board like color doesn't look that great so i was like i wonder if they have anything not that color and they have museum board which is like this paper and they sell the scraps so these are 25 cents each which is amazing because a whole sheet of them like four of this long is probably like six dollars so i bought a bunch of them i literally had them go to the back and i was like do you have any more by chance and they came out and brought me this huge giant stack so i'm gonna use it for this and if i'm not gonna use it for this i'll use it for something else i'm sure this is gonna come in handy a lot this year because of just the nature of what i'm doing also does it fit oh my god it fits these what if i just like mount them and like put them on my wall i might do that honestly because like i don't know what to do with these i literally don't know what to do with these any ways i have a bunch of museum board so we're going to try to make the pink one because i think the pink one would look nice with this board and we're gonna just see how that goes yeah <laughs> i'm kind of blinking because i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm very excited i kind of wish that i made like the green one with this because i think like the colors just look so cute you know but that's okay so we're going to attempt to make the pink one with this museum board and see how it goes i have no idea i honestly don't really know what museum board even is but we're gonna try it so let's do that let me get my exacto knife we are ready to and so as you can tell, I was really excited by this museum board, but spoiler alert, it doesn't actually go as well as I thought it would. It did cut super easily though. So enjoy this little like ASMR type vibe of me just cutting the museum board because it cut like butter, especially compared to the super thick board that I've been using. But anyway, we're gonna repair the sheets now, the pink sheets. And that basically just means I'm gonna cut all of them out and fold them properly. I already bone folded all of them. So you can just enjoy this little montage of me folding all the sheets. But this really was the one that I thought was gonna go super well because like I already made a prototype and I figured what could go wrong I already know exactly what I'm doing and the only difference is that I'm using the museum board which I thought was not that big of a variable but turns out it was and so after I finished folding all these sheets we're gonna just glue them down and this is just the same method where I'm gonna glue down all of the folded sheets I'm gonna line up the museum board I decided to ditch the washi paper because first of all the museum board was super light so I didn't really have to use that and second of all this paper was really thick so I realized that I don't actually need the washi paper so that's the first change that I made to how I started making my board books. We're gonna glue everything down and it went really well at first. Like it seemed like everything was going perfectly and nothing could really go wrong. But this museum board is more like paper based, I feel like, than it is like, I don't know, thick cardboard based. Basically the chipboard that I was using or the board book is very, very dense and compact. So like glue doesn't really affect it a lot. But what was happening with this museum board was that the glue was affecting it a lot. And that was an issue because it started bowing and like making these weird 
weird shapes that wasn't really happening with the board books but at this stage of the project i didn't really notice yet which is why nothing really changed with my methods if i noticed i probably would have weighed it down better and that probably would have stopped it from bowing so much but i just kept going and i didn't really think about it because i was so excited about making these and i was like wow this is gonna be great yeah i ended up finishing it and it just didn't look as good as i thought it would so that was really disappointing i say it looks good in the recap but like just wait till it dries because it did not look the same anymore okay so here's what it looks like it actually looks so good i'm so happy compared to the attempt number one i mean this is cute and all okay first of all the proportions are super weird right because it's like so thick but i think i don't know if i like it better with the white or not i do actually think now that i've tried the white that i'm gonna do the board for this one again because i think at least for this colorway it looks better i'm gonna go and try to use the corner rounder i don't know how it's gonna go um also i'm totally like yes I know all these numbers are gonna get cut off. I don't know how I'm gonna fix it, but I do know I want these corners round and I think I might just try to paint over these numbers if it gets too bad, but we will see. I mean, some of the things in the corners might get cut off too, so we'll have to see, but I really like how it came out so far. So let's go ahead and try to get the corner rounder to work. Okay, uh, it was going well. And then I left it to dry fanning out because what happened was the back, you can see like the paint started coming off a little bit because I think the whole thing was just so damp and I had it under my laptop so that it would be flat. And then all the moisture was like pooling at the bottom. So it started taking off the paint when I took it off the table. So so then I laid it out sprawled to dry and now the front cover like a lot of it is bowed and it just won't go back to normal. I feel like this was kind of a fail. Also I feel like there's something off-putting with it being white. Like I want it to be white but for some reason it doesn't feel right with it being white. I don't know what it is about it but um I might try to save this someday because I feel like if I put in the book press or something maybe it'll go flat again but I don't think it will. So this was a fail unfortunately maybe the museum board would work better with smaller sheets i think it's because this is too big but also i just want to talk about how i changed the proportions of the pink one to be more like board book like because it's kind of vertical but i kind of hate this like i'm not gonna lie i don't want to be too hard on my work because i know a lot of you guys really love it but like i really don't like this more squarish format of the prints i think it looks bad which is really annoying because i spent so much time and effort trying to to like put these stars in and these sprinkles in and stuff and everything. It's still kind of damp in here, oh my God. But like, it just doesn't look good. Like it doesn't look as good as this one, which by the way, I rounded the corners and it looks so much better now. But yeah, like this, I just feel like, oh my God, <gasps> I've never done this before. That's cool, oh my God. Um, but anyway, like I think the board looks better now that I have this by comparison, which is really unfortunate, but I guess sometimes you just have to like try things to figure it out. And so, yeah, I don't like this one. This one's a fail. I guess we just won't have a pink whale shark book unless I go and get it reprinted, which I don't really feel like doing. So we might just have green ones, which is fine. I think I can make another pink one another day. I just don't think I'm up to do it now. I know I should have printed two of them. Like, look what happens when you don't print two of them. Arr, I knew this was gonna happen. But um, yeah, so I don't like the pink one, unfortunately. So my $4 left of museum board, I mean, I'm sure I'll find something to do with it. It will not be for this. And um, well, now that I know this, let's move on to the next one, I guess. So, so the last one I have is the giant one, the giant green one. So let's go ahead and start that. Okay, so now it is officially time to get started on this giant sheet of whale shark stuff. This is gonna be like the final one because I think this is gonna be the cutest one. So I'm pretty excited to get started. Okay, so I sanded the edges of these and it looks so much better. Like I actually didn't like it because of how I did the edges, but then I sanded them and like the paper looks so flush with it and it looks 
really good. Like I'm surprised by how big of a difference the sanding made it because it makes it look like it was no longer chewed by a dog. Honestly, it literally looked like my dog, my dog, I don't have a dog. It looked like a dog just went like chomp, chomp, chomp on the edges, which is valid because I didn't want to use the corner rounder. There is a corner rounder, um, which is basically like a punch that you can do at the edges, but it's for paper, first of all. And second of all, the reason I didn't do it was because my numbers, as you can see, the 11 was the only one that got a little bit cut off, but they are so close to the edge that the corner rounder would have just like taken them off. And I literally sat here and like thought about it for so long and I was like, I cannot get these numbers taken off. I was originally gonna paint over the numbers um, and just have like a weird gouache spot on my entire book. And I'm like, why am I doing that? And then I realized there is enough space to round it if I'm very gentle and careful with it. So that is what I ended up doing. Um, and I think it, I'm like so surprised with how good it looks. For those of you asking why I didn't round this edge, first of all, a lot of board books don't round that edge and I don't want to round that edge. Um, mostly because these are handmade and I'm worried that if I round this edge, it gives the paper too much of a start to tear because I mean, these feel pretty stable, but you never know when one like falls off a table or like someone handles it wrong or something. So yeah, that's why I didn't do that. Also, I love like this color. I think it looks so good. I um, changed it from the original. This is the <laughs> ugly one, but this is the original as you can see. And then I changed it to match this book. And honestly, okay. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Also, I'm gonna call this green. I know some people think this is yellow. I'm calling this green. It's like a chartreuse green, okay? It's like a lime green. I've been obsessed with this color green specifically this spring, but just in general. I think it's because of this bag. Let me show you. It's because of her. I got this bag in New York a little bit ago and it's just been like inspiring my color palettes, as you can tell. I'm very easily inspired by like things around me, so. That is what happened with that. In terms of this color, I don't know if you guys have noticed, it's been in like all my thumbnails on YouTube. I changed like the format of my thumbnails and I've just been obsessed with this color green. So when I recolored it, I was like, you know what? Why not use that green? Because I love it so much. But yeah, like the whale sharks are also a different tint of blue. So they're like more warm, but I love the colors of this too. I think I'm scared to say I like it more than the original color. I honestly don't want to look at this book anymore because it's just like so, I'm like upset about it. I wish there was a way to like take prints off once you glue them, but like there isn't. But you know what? Failures are important. It's a good lesson to have learned. So I think I will remake the pink one another day. Maybe when I come back from spring break, because right now I'm just like overwhelmed with the thought of spring break. I just think that like this looks so fresh and clean maybe it's because I haven't done anything in this colorway and it just came out so good that I love it but yeah the rounded corners look really good now I don't know if you guys can really tell okay so before I start I normally cut out all my boards and this one I decided to round the edges first because I rounded the edges on my prototype and it turned out really really well but it literally looks like a dog chewed it because I did it by scissors and I did it badly so these ones I cut with scissors and they look like that and then if you sand them they look very nice and pretty so I'm about to go through and sand all of these so that they can look good this is so extra but we are doing it anyway so yeah but yeah I really love how this one came out specifically this was really weird because like I made it and the corners were square and you guys saw that the corners were square and then like slowly I cut the corners at one point I was like oh that looks nice and then another point I sanded it so like I didn't do all of this all at once I kind of did it while I was working on the other ones and that's just really strange of me because normally I like to do everything all at once this was very interesting but i love how this one came out specifically even though there's some mistakes like you can see on the second page i creased it a little bit badly here on some of the pages like you can see that's from the scissors cutting um, so it's not perfect as you can see that edge is really raw and that one just has like no paint on it from the scissors but i just think it looks so cute so i'm excited to start the final one i already have these boards cut out and i rounded the edges and as you can see i was so specific with these edges i worked so hard to make sure that they are all like rounded and smooth and they for the most part i know you can't tell right now line up with each other which i'm really proud of so i'm pretty confident in how this is gonna go so yeah i have my prototype that came out well so i basically have you know the template for how i'm gonna do the next one and then i have boards 
um, which for the most part are all, let me try to line them up for you guys so you can tell. For the most part, pretty much the same size. My only concern is that this one, I glued the paper on and then I cut the edges, but because I wanted to make them as close as possible, for these ones, I did not cut the edges. Um, for these ones, I cut the board before I glued on the paper, so I'll have to glue on the paper and then cut the edges, but I think that's fine. Also, 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 I have an idea, right? So for the cover, I actually have the cover cut out here. I want to laminate only the cover because I realized when I was putting this on the table and stuff, I'm super scared about it getting dirty. So I'm going to laminate the cover of the big one. I'm really excited. I think this is a really good size. So yeah, I'm going to be laminating the covers. I've been putting the covers on last because I don't want it to get dirty from any of the glue and stuff, but this way I really don't have to worry about it when it's done. And I feel like it'll look more professional. So we're going to go ahead and store on the final one. I am so excited. We have all the boards. This took me like probably two hours to cut out. I'm not even gonna lie. All my coffee stuff is stuck to the bottom. But yeah, this took so long to cut out so this better have been worth it i was even so particular as to like which edge is the top and which is the bottom so i marked all the top corners with hearts which you probably can't see in a lot of them but they're there i swear and we have to keep them in this specific order because this is the order in which the edges line up the best let's just go ahead and get started i'm gonna get my giant sheet and this one is the one that i'm gonna walk through uh, very closely because the other ones I was just like going through and trying to work out all the kinks but this one I think I finally got it so we're going to cut out the pieces first but you guys know I use an exacto for everything but obviously for these pieces I'm just going to use scissors first okay and as you can see they're all formatted so they're like two page spreads that is good it's so pretty. Like, honestly, I love the colors. I'm just like, I think it's just because it's such a big change um, that I really love the colors. Okay, I guess we can go up the middle here. It's really nice because if you think about it, this project has been in the making for a long time since I designed these so long ago and then I tried to bind them, they looked horrible so I just had them as prints and then that went well for a while but then I got bored and really just like overall dissatisfied because I really want this to be a nice book and I didn't know how to bind it for the longest time until I realized I could do a board book which is like super cool. So this project has been in the making for a long long time and it's just so crazy how like sometimes things just turn out like that you know. But okay we have completely cut up the entire set so we have front cover which is just repurposed from like the, the prints. I didn't really have the energy to like cr create a whole different cover. This is the back, which is also repurposed. Then we have 1213. This one's uh, one of the end sheets. This is four and five, eight and nine, six and seven, 10 and 11. They're all out of order. Two and three, and this is 14 in the end page. So let's go ahead and cut these out. I've been trimming them like this way because I just think it works the best that way. And then I leave the edges to cut along whatever the boards are. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut these out real quick. Woo! This is very exciting for me. <laughs> wow, this is so exciting. Finally starting the final. So long process in the making, but totally worth it. We're just gonna cut these out. Got my little ruler. And then I just line it up to the edge. And then someone in the last video or the video before that, at some point, one of my recent videos said that I should try using a box cutter for just everything, including paper, which I was very skeptical about at first because they were like, trust me, I used to use X-Acto knives for everything too, but now I use box cutters and it's really changed my life. And I was like, why would I use a box cutter for paper? But like, they're literally so right because you just use so much less energy because it's such a big blade that it's just like, I am literally amazed. There's really no reason for me to have to use an X-Acto knife. Like it just hurts your hand to hold such a small item so tightly. So thank you to whoever commented that. I'll have to try to find your comment so I can thank you properly. But sometimes these comments really be changing my life. So if you guys have any like recommendations just at any time, feel free to drop them down below. Okay. It takes a while to line up these rulers sometimes. 
Look how fast I am now because I'm using a box cutter. It's insane. I've spent the whole day doing this so far and honestly, I'm not tired of it. This is like really fun. I enjoy it thoroughly. Honestly, I love like having everything prepared and then just like being in my room permitted away for the day because like sometimes it's really overwhelming just like being outside, going to class, having so many like to think about and do that this is honestly really relaxing. So I really enjoy it. And cutting this out is like so easy. I've cut out a lot more complicated things in my life so like if i have to just cut straight lines for a day dude i'm totally down but yeah i'm surprised how something so simple like a board book has given me like a new method to do so many different things and like i ex experimented with so many different things this one is the cover so we're just gonna cut off three of the edges because we're gonna leave one to trim against the board. There we go, like that. We got more of these guys to get through as well. But yeah, overall, just doing this all day. Got my coffee and just straight chilling. Okay, miniature break because I got hungry and went downstairs to get some food. First of all, went to the mail room. Someone sent me fan mail, which is so cute. So this is from Alexis M. Thank you so much. I just want to show you guys like this super cute stationery. I love it. It's my melody. I won't show the whole thing, but I just... <sighs> The paper is so cute. It's so like me and also you. And I love that like we all have the same aesthetic on this channel. I literally love that. So I will treasure this forever. This is so cute. Thank you, Alexis. Also, another thing I wanted to mention. Also, she sealed it with a sticker, but they have boba at my school cafeteria right now. This actually doesn't have boba and it has red beans. They just have it. And so I got one with my meal points. Oh. There's boba in here. Well, thank you, RISD. How interesting. But yeah, wanted a bit of a boba break, putting it right next to my coffee I haven't finished. I also got some sashi. So we have some tempura California roll here to eat. And then we're going to get back to working on this book because then I just have to score them, glue them, sand a little bit, and hopefully we'll be done. Hello, so welcome, welcome. First of all, I'm gonna put up my hair so I can see what I'm doing. But now we are going to score everything. So I have a bone folder and we're just gonna crease the centers of all of these. Let me get my ruler. And then we're just gonna go through and do this. So I take a long time to match things up usually. And then this is different than how I used to score things. I used to use my X-Acto knife, but now I realized, well, I always knew that like the X-Acto knife kind of compromises the quality of the paper because it's going to mess up on the structure since it cuts into the paper a little bit. But now I basically just like mark the paper with a bone folder and it just kind of compresses the paper fibers and then that makes it foldable. So I like this a lot better. Sometimes I hit the edge of the ruler because it just makes like moving the ruler a lot easier. I don't know. I don't know if anyone relates to that. This one's the cover, this one's the back. And then another one. I really love this end paper though. I think it like the colors look so good. I want to use it for something else, but I don't know what. Ooh. All right, we have two left. Doobie, doobie, doo. I really enjoy this to be honest. I really like doing like repetitive brainless things because it's just like I have to think a lot during the day that this is just like a nice break but I'm still being productive you know so it's nice. Here's a tiny one so cute so we're gonna make the final one. So now I'm gonna fold all of these and this step I mean is not that hard but want to make sure you don't like mess it up i mean when you score stuff you make it pretty difficult to mess anything up so i'm not gonna score these with a bone folder um just because i don't think it's necessary and sometimes when you do that it compromises the paper too because when you fold something too hard that can just happen i guess i'm so excited to have this like together because i think it's just gonna look so good 
And I did so much preparation because I've learned so much from making the tiny one and the pink one that now it's like, I'm pretty confident with this and I hope that nothing goes wrong. Okay, so they're all folded. I'm gonna put them in order just to make sure that I don't do anything wrong. So this is one, two, three, four. This is the last one. This is for this one. We have it all in order. Looking so good. And now we're going to have the covers and stuff. So um, you guys saw in my first one, I was using washi paper in between just because that's what my professor told me to do. But I found that not only does it really mess up like how neat your stack looks, but it's also just incredibly unnecessary. So I'm not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna go straight in with glue. So I need a napkin. Okay, I found the big one. Um, and I think I'm actually going to use like one of these strips for the glue as well so I can like swoop and make it nice and even. I did that for one of the sheets one time and it actually went really well. So normally I like to start somewhat in the middle or like just not on the first sheet because even though I've done this so many times, I usually make a mistake on the first sheet. So we're actually going to do that. Let's have this set up a little bit better. We will put all these here and then we will have this here. This doesn't need to be here. <laughs> Got my glue. We're just going to start, I guess. So I'm trying really hard to focus and like make sure I'm not messing anything up. Always have the glue bottle in the way when I'm filming um, for multiple reasons. So I try not to put too much glue, but I definitely do have to put more glue on these just cause I need them to be super secure. Like when I was making boxes and stuff, started off putting a bunch of glue. And as I like kind of learned how to make boxes, I tried to use less glue, but it still just kind of is necessary sometimes. There's no problem that glue can't fix, but sometimes glue be making its own problems. Um, I think more often than not though, it does solve problems, which is why I use so much of it. But yeah, we want to make sure to get these edges try to keep my fingers as glue free as possible but as we all know it's not the most realistic at times so what i want to do is use this spread the glue evenly because if you have the glue spread evenly then your paper will go on more smoothly which is important okay one last one i think that's good make sure my hands are clean and then we're just going to put this on here. Not a lot of wiggle room, not that I want any, but one of the hard things I feel like about making these is that sometimes there's not a lot of space. I like to just make sure that there's enough glue on the edges here, because this is this part is what really secures the book together. So I want to make sure that enough glue is really getting in there. That looks pretty secure now. I can always go back and glue better. But yeah, now we're gonna do the next one. So I like to apply glue to the board, not to the paper, because the paper will curl. So much glue, making sure to get it on the corners. I'm gonna take my little scrapey guy. I feel like the scraping is maybe not helping as much as I think it does. So I think I'm gonna stop doing that. So here's the hard part, right? Is lining everything up with glue because you only have so much time before it's gonna start drying. Um, so you don't always have a lot of space to move things around. This one looks, I'm gonna have an exposed spine on this one. So I really want it to look nice and neat. Open it up and then just kind of feel around, make sure there's nothing weird going on. I think this one worked out really well. All right, we're off to a good start. That's good to know. And then I'm gonna have to trim these um, edges soon because I cannot have more than one on the edge, if that makes sense. Like once there's two pieces of paper on the edge, it really doesn't work anymore. Just adding a little bit of more glue. Always just add some more glue. I need like a press to put them in while they dry, but I don't have that. I need two more clips. Do I have two more clips? Three more clips actually. One of them is in my hair, but now it is all clamped. So that is good. Gonna give it some time. It's easier to do the small ones because the corners don't peel up as much because they're so tiny, but these are a different story. So I'm gonna wait for the glue to fully dry and just like take my time with this one, I guess. Do, 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 do. All right, so the edges look pretty good now. So I'm going to just trim them. So yeah, get these clips out of the way. 
I'm going to change my blade actually because I want this to be sharp. I'm going to end up uh, sanding these back down anyway, so it's okay if they're not perfect. Because like I said, when I sand the corners, it makes them a lot better. So I just need them to be like out of the way, if that makes sense. But yep, we're just gonna make sure there's no glue on the table. Should have checked that earlier, because if there was, would have been too late. And then, oh, cutting into the board, that's not good. I'm just trim like around this, which is pretty easy. And then I like to see the green on the side, because then you know you don't have any white spots. Oh, that looks so good. It looks so much better when you have a, a clean exacto knife. <laughs> I was using like a dull one before. Oh wow, it'd be cutting through everything. I didn't have that before. Low key. Two pages done. Now we just keep going. Let's do the first page because we didn't actually do that one. Let's do that one before things get more out of order. The board is bowing a little bit, but I'm not too concerned because I feel like once everything is glued down and it starts drying, it'll like settle a little bit into itself or so I'm hoping, <laughs> but I feel like this is not a permanent predicament. Glue, 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 glue. Making sure it's very gluey on this spine edge. My videos are never meant to be tutorials, but I feel like they low-key are half the time. So yeah, <laughs> but it's also just like my experience with making board books so far. Just kind of my journey, if you will. Just gonna put a little bit extra on the corners. Okay, this is the one. And now at this point, I think we can just start going the next one. So this, these can be, clamped for now. Yes, these are all my hair clips because I don't have any binder clips, so this is just how it be, you know? Improvise. Blue. That was probably a lot of glue. We will make it work. Like, glue starts drying so fast that it's like, you think it's a lot of glue and then like, it's really not. Because <laughs> by the time you're finally, like, have your glue smoothed out and you're ready to put it on, it's, it's mostly dry already. <laughs> Somehow, that always happens. And then line up the edges. This one is going so well. I'm very happy about it. Clamp them all and then you drink your boba and that's just how it goes. One of the things I realized with these board books is that you want like the spine of the paper to stick out a little bit past the cardboard just to give it some give. Or this isn't cardboard, but the book board. I should actually have like a fifth clip here. I'm running out of hair clips. How am I supposed to keep my bangs out of the way? The book has a little bit of like heft to it. Like there's a good amount of pages. I think it goes by a lot faster just cause like you can really build off of what you already have. Four and five, making sure the orientation is correct. And just line up the edges. The paper part is definitely easier than the board part cause the paper part is like, there's not much to line up to be honest. There we go. So we can just like have that chillin' while we put glue on the next one. Cause like, see, once it has like heft to it, it just weighs itself down. So once it can weigh itself down, it really is like self-sufficient. <laughs> the glue on the edges, never enough glue on the edges, I swear. Now we wait for it to dry again. I think today's a very like dry day as well. Sometimes when I glue things, I can kind of tell what the weather is like, judging by how fast things dry. And today is one of those days where it is an alarming, fast rate. All right, everything is lining up so well. I'm very happy with it. Okay, cool. Woo! Okay, for some reason, the glue application on this one is like kind of pretty. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's why. But now we're on the eighth and ninth page. So just have it folded, turn it, and apply it. This is one of those things where like, once you have everything pre-prepared, you just have to like put it together and it's just like so easy. So I still have to laminate the two covers, which I will do probably after I finish. Definitely gets way easier once you have the framework set because now you just put stuff on and line it up. Best part is probably when you can still slide stuff around because after a certain point, the glue doesn't really let you do that. It, it starts drying like pretty fast, but we're just gonna trim the edges. So you just open the page that needs to be trimmed, slide this in there and there we go. Take the whole thing, flip it over and then you do the other side. Ooh, 
I have another bottle of glue because I actually, I never used Elmer's glue at RISD like prior to taking this winter session class. But now that I have, I use so much of it. I bet there's like bottles of glue at home that I never used that I should dig up and find and use now because that's honestly the best feeling when you've been like hoarding the material for so long, but low key don't use it, but you know one day you'll need it. And then you finally need it. And it's like, see, I told you, told you that I needed it. Cause everyone's like, you need to throw that away. And I'm like, no, I'm going to hoard it for the rest of my life. <laughs> this, one's this one's 10 and 11. Flip it over and let it just settle while you do the next one. I just put two like dots on the corners now because I always start running out of glue towards the edges. And like I said, you really need the glue on that extra corner. So it's my new strategy. Overall, you just want a lot of glue on the edges so that you have them like flush. Great, fantastic. So far, I like how thick this is coming out. I think this will be a really good like size to thickness ratio because as you can see, this one's like super like comically thick for how small it is. But I think this one will be like very appropriately thick. So I'm very happy about that. Whoa, that is something you can only achieve with a very sharp blade, but so satisfying. Cool. My little pink trash can is getting of <laughs> paper scraps. Um, ready to move on. We only have two more boards left. So we're very close finishing. Here's what the edges look like. Very clean so far. We haven't even sanded. So, Ooh, glue. Okay, so this one's 12. And oh my God, after this one is the last one. Glue on my hands, but I don't have time to worry about that because this is gonna dry if I don't adjust it soon enough. Second to last board. I don't know why I have that in my head. Alrighty, on to the last one. So we are almost done. Let's just finish her up. Now we're just gonna glue the last board and all we'll have left is the cover. So let's go ahead and finish that. Clap it on there and we did it. Oh my God, I'm so happy. OMG, woo! So I have it propped up like this, which is apparently a dangerous way to let things dry because they'll start bowing. So I'm not gonna keep it like this, but I wanted to show you guys a close up of what the corners look like right now. They're really not that bad. Oh, those, those look pretty bad, bro. But um, yeah, we'll do the close up here. This is what all the corners look like. Truly not excellent, not my finest moment, but not to worry because we're gonna sand them right now. So yeah, and then we're gonna put on the covers and everything's gonna be great. Also, as you can see, there's some gaps here. So I'm either gonna sand them down or cut them. I'll probably cut them because they're bothering me. But yeah, that's what it looks like so far. We're getting very close to the end. Yes, looks so good. <laughs> So I have my cover and my back here, and now it's time to laminate them. So I'm just gonna use one full sheet. I feel like that makes sense. So, this will be very easy. Do they fit like this? No, they don't. Okay, so we'll just do it like this. And then I just laminate over them. I'll just lay this one right next to it. So now they're laminated. We can just cut them out. I'm going to leave the sticky part because I like to trim it flush to the paper. We're just gonna quickly slice these free. Wow, these look really good laminated, so I'm very happy. So you can tell they're very squeaky. Now we're just gonna glue them. So easy now that like the book is fully formed because it's just like a block. So I have things to hold on to, which is very nice. Now we are good to go. So I am going to just trim this one edge on the side really quick, hopefully before this glue dries, match it up, make sure the orientation is right. And, and there we go. Oh my God, it looks so good. Might as well just do the back because this way we can weigh it down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here first before I forget. I just have to trim the sides so it has something to line up with. Line this up. Wow. 
Oh my god, I love the laminated cover. I did not think I was gonna like it this much, but it looks really good. Okay, so. Something dirty got on the cover, but doesn't matter because it's laminated. So it all just like comes off. Amazing. This was a good decision, yes. I'm gonna chill here. We're gonna <laughs> press on the cover to make sure that it adheres properly. And then we're literally done. We just have to cut off the extras and that'll be it. Oh my God, so exciting. Yes, literally looks so good. Okay, so I've been pressing on this cover for three minutes, five minutes now. So I think it's ready to get the excess cut off. This is a bit of a complicated process. We have to prop this book up. So we'll use my boba. So we're gonna have access to this front page. Now we just cut it like we did earlier. Just have to cut it in a couple different directions. Gotta get this corner. All right, cover is done. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the other side without even looking at it. Although you guys can kind of see it. Oh, don't tip my boba over. Oh my God. Oh. Sometimes it's confusing when the paper doesn't just pop off because you're like, where did I not cut it all the way through? I don't really know. Whoa! Now all we have to do, oh my God. Okay, first of all, so many dirty things keep getting on this cover. So this is such a smart decision. But secondly, what I'm gonna do is, take my sandpaper. Where's my little sandpaper? We're just gonna sand very gently, like the edges and stuff, just like I do on the inside, just so that it can be very well incorporated into the cover in the back, just like the inside papers. So basically giving it the same treatment. Okay, so we finally finished. I think it looks so good. I don't know about you guys. So the front is laminated, the back is laminated, and then the insides are like a very nice matte kind of velvety texture. It's still a little bit moist, I can tell, from the glue, but it's gonna dry out and it's gonna be great. Ah! I'm so happy with how this came out and we have the tiny one. A little baby. So yeah, I'm just super pleased with how these turned out. I'm very happy. So thank you guys so much for like being on the journey with me. Ah, I don't honestly have like much to say about it. I just want to lie down. I'm tired. But yeah, this was great. I'm very happy. Oh, we can do the thing that we did with the tiny one. I'm a little scared because this one's heavier, but does it fan? It doesn't fan out quite. Oh, I guess it does. Yeah, it fans out really well. Yeah, I'm going to keep it under a press so that it doesn't start bowing like the other one. Overall, I think it looks great. I am so happy. So thank you guys so much for watching this video with me. I hope this video comes out well because I feel like when I make things I really like in videos, it usually comes out well. Woo, I'm just so happy. Also, I wanna make a statement. Um, In here somewhere I write, I only have like 2000 friends left. I fact checked that recently. I literally don't know where I got that information from because I Googled it. There are more than 2000 whale sharks left on earth. So I think when I was doing the research for this, I got something wrong. Where even is that page? I don't think it's in this one because there's actually a print error in this one. I guess when I was formatting the file, this is the last page. This is this one, but it took out the false information that I had. Is it in the pink one? The 10th page wrong in the green edition. That's crazy. I didn't actually plan for that to have happened. But that's good, I guess, because this is false. So if I reprint them, I need to change the title. But that doesn't really bother me, honestly, because like this narrative is quite uh, elementary and doesn't really make sense. So I don't need that page in there. But oh my God, the universe works in crazy ways. Um, but yeah, I'm going to throw this in the press so that it doesn't keep bowing. But thank you guys so much for watching, for hanging out with me and making these little guys. I had so much fun and I'm so happy with how they turned out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay hydrated, take a nap. I will see you guys when I see you guys. And also, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.